balcony you can see when you look around you take in nature you look at the world with a slightly different perspective don't you well there's a, a new facebook page that's launched today to help adults and children re-engage with nature that is literally all around us at the moment uh, the dinosaur on the windowsill it's been set up by dr neil gosling from the university of southampton who joins me live this morning neil morning to you good morning all right, so I've just talked about nature and how we're all trying to take it in a little bit more and get at one with nature. What have dinosaurs got to do with it all? <laughs> OK, uh, I'm a paleontologist and evolutionary biologist and I work with some really great um, students and other academics and we're working on dinosaurs at the moment. And the really fun thing is that dinosaurs are still with us today. Everyone thinks they went extinct 66 million years ago they didn't there's one group that's alive today and that's the birds and okay. they come into our gardens hopefully every day um and one of the things that with all the uh, reduction in traffic and no airplanes in the sky and just generally a quieter time we are able to you know, we open the back door throw open a window and there's this sound that we don't often get to hear much these days and that's birds singing in the trees and it's i think it's really nice and so i just thought it would be an opportunity for us to do in our enforced isolation for us to actually try and engage a little bit with the wider world it sounds a little bit um ironic or sort of counterintuitive sorry that you can get out and engage with the world when you're stuck in your garden but actually i think we've got a really good opportunity here to do some some back garden safari and understand a little bit more about the natural world. I completely agree with you, Neil. And I've just uh, just sort of got got to grounded. I suppose is the best way to describe it. When you, I, I know there's people practice mindfulness, and it's not something I've ever really been able to do because I'm always, you know, getting distracted by things. But as you say, because we haven't got all those other sounds going on, and everything is so much more calm and peaceful, you do take in those little things, those little bits of nature at Absolutely. night. You look at, I mean, I've been looking at the stars and looking at the moon and. And then you go out in the morning and you look at the flowers and you hear the birds and it is Absolutely. a complete, it feels like a very peaceful environment in in one respect. So is this something well, it, that you've it, it, got? Go it on. Really, it, it really is. I mean, I, I I'm I'm a I'd like to think of myself as quite a strict scientist. Blah blah blah. <laughs> mindfulness. Oh, it's a little bit weird. Mm. Um, it's not. It's really important. We've got so many. Normally, we have so many distractions. There are. Um, Screens everywhere. We're looking at screens. We're walking around. We've got note notes at work now that say, "Don't use your phones on the stairs." I don't think anyone's fallen down them yet, but I, <laughs> <we're> so, <laughs> it's only a matter of time. It, absolutely, we we get tucked into this little world and we get blinkered and blinkered and blinkered. And actually, we do have an opportunity now to stop, look, and listen, and just think about the environment that we are sharing with all kinds of animals and plants from little tiny bugs and arthropods and worms and things crawling around in leaf litter, even crawling around on your um, windowsill in a flower box or on, on a balcony in a flat. You don't have to have a back garden to go out and have a look and appreciate the natural world. You can, If you're up high, in fact, you might even be at eye level with the seagulls and you can see what they're doing. And we're quite lucky, I think, at this time of year for this to have happened because the world is changing so much in terms of the, the plants and the animals are coming back. We've got birds migrating back. Um, and if they aren't here yet, they will be soon. We've got flowers and plants uh, the blossom on the trees. We've got trees opening up their leaves. And it's, it's just, it's really quite mm. a nice time to, if we're, you know, it's putting a positive on things, we're quite fortunate that it's now. Mm. And we've got this opportunity to see um, the world coming back to life again. Yeah, you make a lot of sense, Neil. So if people want to find out more about the Facebook group, go on there. There's, It's quite interactive, isn't it? People can ask questions and send in pictures and all that sort of stuff. Well, that's that's the intention, yeah. I mean, if you can... It, it's What we want to do is to put up resources that you can take away and, um, and work with. We are... Again, I'm very lucky um, doing the job that I do because I still have my students and I'm getting used to working online. 
but I'm still going to be giving my lectures. All the academics will be. Um, we're still going to be interacting with our students. So I'm, I'm very fortunate. Um, but actually, some people are now stuck and they don't quite know what to do. So another, another resource that we've got, the, the um, university has a school's liaison team. And they're normally working with the primary schools and secondary schools in and around Southampton. But actually, you can use these resources at home as well. Um, and I'll give you an email, an, a, 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 a web address, actually. Mm -hmm. It's www.sottontalktous, so S-O-T-O-N-T-A-L-K-2, number two, U-S, dot org dot uk slash resources um i can send this through to you as well you can stick it up on your website if you yeah, want lovely. to um but it means that uh there's there's lots of different things that we've we've got that uh normally teachers would be using but actually we can now start to um give out to parents who are now homeschooling, homeschooling and maybe never yep. thought about doing all of this sort of stuff and all of a sudden they've got to uh work out what they're going to do with their kids but eight hours a day and all of a sudden I think teachers are, are suddenly becoming the heroes that we didn't know walked among us um, but they are, mm -hmm. um, you, you've got to find things to do with your kids so why not Why not do something like this great um, idea, the, really the nice Facebook, idea um, I've worked out how to use Facebook properly this morning um, and the, <laughs> the site is now, it's a private site so you have to ask to become a member and there's some questions that you need to answer and you have to agree to the um, that just the house rules about being kind and there might be children around, respect, privacy, no hate speech, that sort of thing. Uh, but it's uh, it's open, so you can now search it, search for there. it on Facebook. It's the dinosaur on your windowsill. Um, we've already got resources up. There's already photographs going up. It's going to, it's quite nice already. Um, and this is basically the people who are involved in this. I mean, yes, I, I set the page up, but it's students and academics from the university. Uh, we've got uh, museum curators from Portsmouth, which is nice. Portsmouth and Southampton working together. They wow. said it couldn't happen. Who'd have thought that would have happened? Neil, this sounds great. We need to. I need to get to the travel news, so we'll give the uh, web address out again in just a second. But if you want to go onto Facebook and have a look, and as Neil was saying, this is perfect. If you've got youngsters at home, if you're doing a bit of homeschooling, but you want to make it a bit more interactive and uh, get them outside uh, in the back garden or out for your, you know, your daily walk, this is the perfect opportunity. So the dinosaur on the windowsill uh, set up by Dr Neil Gosling from the University of Southampton. Go and have a look.